Three, two, one. Look, your penis is gonna die. If we wait much longer, I'll be forced to amputate it. That's what the doctor said to me that night as I sat there on the ER table with the pants around my ankles, nurses giggling, and with a purple heart on that pointed to the sky. And this was, without question, the most humiliating part of my life. And it's a story that I rarely share. But today, as mortifying as it is, I feel you have to hear it. Because if you or anyone you know is suffering with any erection problems, you'll want to listen to every word. As this is the most unusual story of how I discovered the answer to naturally eliminating any form of erectile dysfunction, getting hard and staying hard when you want, and giving you lasting power that leaves women awestruck. Because contrary to what people have told you, it's not age. It's not low testosterone, and it's not diabetes. It's not any medication that you're on, and it's not just poor circulation that's causing it. And after you see what I have to say, you'll discover what the true cause of ED is and turn it around and be able to dive right into the sack and do it over and over and over as many times as you want and all without any drugs, devices, or nasty side effects. So what I'm about to share with you can't be found anywhere else, I know, because I've looked. I'm Brad Stevens. Before you watch this entire presentation and take in everything I need to share, before you believe what I tell you, you'll want to take note of the true reason why every supposed solution out there to weak or short-lived or non-existent erections is doomed to fail. Those who stay to the very end are the only ones who will have the only answer to getting hard on demand. And it lies in only one thing unraveling and eliminating the two erection killers that I'll be telling you about here in just a moment. So, how did sitting in the ER that night help me find the holy grail of male virility? Well, it all started a few years ago on Valentine's Day. The missus and I had planned a romantic evening and we had a special reason to celebrate. I'd finally gotten a promotion that I'd worked for years to get. And the dinner was great and the tension was building up all night and all the way into the bedroom. But after we got undressed and the moment came, then nothing. The harder I tried to get it up, the worse it got. And my wife, Angela, bless her heart, she was supportive and kind about it. She knew what a blow to my ego this was and she did everything she could to let me know that it was all right. But it really got to me. But I mean, over the last few years, I noticed that I'd lost my libido and I wasn't in the mood as much. And when Angie and I did it, I noticed that it was taking longer to get it up. Or sometimes I just wouldn't be as hard as I normally was. And recently, I was having more and more episodes of not being able to get hard at all. I didn't really think much about it. I just thought, ah, oh, it's just stress or it's just some strange phase or something. But now after a few months with 100% limpness, something about tonight made me surrender to the simple fact and said, Brad, you have a problem and it's not going to go away on its own, I told myself. Yet part of me was still not ready to say those two words, erectile dysfunction. I remember a time I told myself, I can't imagine having that. That'll never happen to me. I mean, that was something that those other guys got. But reality sunk in. I was one of those other guys now. But did I go out and frantically try to find a solution? No. Nope. It was still hard for me to face it. Like a part of me just couldn't really accept it. And sure, on the outside, I was full of life, active, had it all together. But the more time passed, the more I felt like I was hiding something. And the worst part, I saw how it was affecting my wife. As much as I didn't want to fully accept my ED, I wasn't blind to how it was affecting her, too. Those nights when we'd give it a shot all ended up in failure. And sometimes I'd get hard and think, oh yeah, see, well, it was just a phase. But just a few minutes into it, I'd go flaccid again. Now I'll tell you, there aren't many things more frustrating than wanting to make love and not being able to do so. And even worse, getting into the swing of things and then poof, all gone and each time she's just kind of patted me on the back and said it's all right honey it happens sometimes but i could see her frustration i mean i felt like i was letting her down like she was settling for less and i was the cause but that changed one weekend when we were having one of our family barbecues i went into the kitchen to grab some more dogs for the grill and i saw my wife's sister janice we said hi and did our little chit chat and then i was walking out and she grabbed me by the arm and said brad we need to talk now, maybe it was the way she looked at me, but I knew exactly what she was talking about. My shoulders fell and I dropped the dogs on the counter. She's told me all about it, Brad. 
Look, you gotta talk to her. If you don't do something about it, she's going to leave you. Oh man, I thought, well, she knows she was right. How long was I just going to brush this under the rug? That night, Angie and I talked about it for the first time. And she told me how she felt, and I just had to swallow it and take it all in. You know, what really cut deep, though, was when she said, Brad, I feel so guilty. But when a man pays attention to me, I can't help but feel attracted to him. I mean, you're not even trying. You act like you don't even have an issue. Well, that was it. The next morning, I made an appointment to see a urologist, and he rattled off a bunch of questions. Do I have diabetes? No. Do I smoke? Nope. How much exercise do I do? A lot. What do I usually eat? Well, I eat healthy. And then he gave me an inspection to see if there was anything physically wrong. And after looking over my blood tests, he peered over his thick glasses and scratched his head and muttered, Brad, you're as healthy as a horse. You should be running marathons. And then he just shrugged and said, um, I think you should try Viagra. And then he said, now it's pretty expensive. It's $35 a pill, so I'll give you some samples with different doses to see which works best for you. <laughs> $35 a pill, Jesus. I mean, more like a $35 erection extortion fee. But you know, hey, I was at the end of my rope, so I thought to myself, Brad, you need to solve this. It's not just your marriage. It's not just about being intimate with your woman. It's about being a man again. You want to feel alive again. You want to do whatever it takes to get your erections back again. And then the doctor looked me sternly in the eye and huffed, Now, if you get an erection lasting more than four hours, you need to call me or go into an ER. And I was like, uh, okay. I think a four-hour stiffy would be great. What could be wrong with that? <laughs> but, yeah, sure. Well, later on after dinner, I said, okay, bottoms up. We weren't too sure what to expect, but about 20 minutes later... Bingo, we got liftoff. After a year of nothing, it was glorious. But little did I know the nightmare that was right around the corner. And when we were done, I was still hard. That's fantastic. This little blue pill really does the trick. And then some. Maybe the $35 extortion fee per pill actually was worth it after all. Well, we made love two more times. But on the second time, I started to feel a little bit lightheaded. And my head started to hurt. And about an hour later, I noticed that I was still hard and lightheaded, and my skin was flush and my heart was racing, and not because of the bedroom gymnastics that I'd just performed. This was, this was different, and my penis was starting to hurt <laughs> really bad. And then I remembered what the doctor had said to me. If you get an erection lasting more than four hours, you need to call me or go to an ER. So I called the doctor, even though it was after midnight. I got the voicemail, of course. Damn. ER. Do I really have to go to an ER? Well, I woke Angie up and she said that I didn't look too good. I was sweating and now I was in pain. So without hesitation, she blurts out, we got to go to the ER now. So there I was sitting on the ER table at full mast, trying to forget the look the young girl at check-in gave me when I told her what I was there for. Well, the doctor walks in and of course, as my luck would have it, she's this stunning supermodel looking redhead. What happened to the old doc? <laughs> and to make matters worse, she comes in with two nurses female nurses who looked barely out of college. If there was a hole small enough and dark enough on planet Earth, I wanted to find it and crawl right into it. Then I start to wince as Dr. Supermodel proceeds to twist my guy back and forth like she was shifting gears on a Mack truck just to see what was going on. Now she sighed and flatly said, You've got priapism. It's a side effect of Viagra and we see it a lot here. The good news is that you got here in time to do something about it. The bad news is there's only one way to treat it, and we have to treat it now. I'm going to have to drain blood from your penis. And as she said that, out of nowhere, she pulls out this 18-gauge syringe from her pocket. The blood drained from my face. I think it drained from every other part of my body, too, except my dick. But there the doctor was, nurses behind her trying hard and failing miserably to hide their giggles, telling me all this with a straight face as if this could not be any more humiliating. And I asked if there was anything else that we could do. Well, here's the deal, Brad. Your penis is going to die. If we wait much longer, I'll be forced to amputate it. And you don't want that, do you? If we don't drain the blood from it, it will literally suffocate to death and we'll have to cut it off. She explained that when someone has a priapism, blood is stuck inside the penis. It can't leave. So blood can go in, but it can't get out. And that's why I was in excruciating pain. And that's also why my new blood could not get in. It's too full. So the blood in there is just stagnant. Since no new blood is entering, it stops getting oxygen. So if I don't do something right now, the cells will start dying and my member will have to be surgically cut off. So she then proceeded to unceremoniously stick this 18-gauge 